This is Jordan Edwards, and this is the Business Jiu-Jitsu Podcast. I'm here with Eli Baev and Daniel Moskowitz. Uh, Eli and Daniel just wrote a book called Sales Jiu-Jitsu, perfect topic and complement to this po- project, Business Jiu-Jitsu. Really excited to get to know these guys. Uh, Elliot was kind enough to reach out to me and offer to send me a copy of his book, but he was too slow on the trigger, and I I purchased it myself on Amazon, which I suggest that everyone who listens to this does. And uh, it's always great to help out some entrepreneurs and, and fellow authors. It also looks like we use the same publisher, uh, Lioncrest and, and Scribe Media, and I've spoken extensively about how impressed I am with that company. But uh, it's just really nice to meet you guys and um, very excited to learn about you and learn about the book. It only arrived yesterday afternoon, otherwise I would have devoured it quickly. But uh, please tell me about yourselves and, and how the project came together, where you are, and your journey with jujitsu and business. Well, we're in Toronto, uh, as I mentioned uh, when we were speaking earlier, uh, second degree black belt under Sean Williams. Um, and I run a school in Toronto, Open Mat, <clears throat> excuse me, Open Mat MMA, and uh, a side uh, program I run for entrepreneurs, Mastermind BJJ, is something I've been I ran a few years ago that Daniel came out to one day, and uh, just as we were running class, like you'd, you'd see his ears perk up every now and again, and something just seemed to stick out. And after <clears throat> it was a, it was half jujitsu, half kind of like business and life development stuff. So we'd go to brunch after. And as we'd sit down, um, we just got talking. There was just so much overlap between how I teach and how Daniel teaches sales. And one thing led to another. And one of the one of the students that one of the other students there kept that kept saying of multiple times, you guys should write a book, you guys should write a book. And it happened so often that I decided we just like, let's just go out and like really make this thing happen. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I had I had just um, lost 102 pounds at the time. Mm-hmm. And my I was I couldn't type properly. I couldn't walk. I was bumping into things. I went to a neurologist. I'm like, what the heck's going on to me? I'm like, I, like, I, like, I lost all this weight. It's like, oh, you broke the mind body map. You know, like your mind has a map of your body of like how far your arm is, all this kind of stuff. You broke it. You lost too much weight too quickly. He said, go pick up a martial art. And then a, for a friend of El, a mutual friend posted that he was looking for people, entrepreneurs to come in uh, to his group. And I, I started researching jujitsu and Brazilian jujitsu and the idea of not hurting somebody like you can choose to win without ever hurting anybody. And that that aligns to how I do sales. Like when I when I do sales, it's about not you, you want to leave people better off than you found them. And it just instantly attracted me. And so I started coming out and learning and. Um, now, now I'm addicted. <laughs> Phenomenal. Uh, I'm right with you. What, why do you guys think it is that so many people who are in business and jujitsu have this shared common mindset? You know, like that's so key to my business. You know, I own, I own, uh, I run two businesses primarily. One, I'm a, a real estate entrepreneur. All of my background and training is in commercial real estate. And my sister and I started a fashion company 11 years ago called Mixology Clothing Company. And today we have 12 brick and mortar locations and a web business. We have 225 uh, female employees. And I often tell them, I said, don't sell the customers. I don't want you to oversell them. Just be of service, treat them really well. And they'll come back over and over and over again if you develop really authentic and beautiful relationships. And so why do you think it is that jujitsu guys kind of find this together? You know, I think <clears throat> probably the at the foundation, if you're a business person, just the stress relief initially is maybe what draws you in or, you know, some of the uh, the idea of like being more effective or more tough, but very quickly just, I mean, it's hard. You know, I, I listened to a few of your, your episodes, one with uh, Rich, Rich Burn. Burn, yeah. Um, and it's just that there's it's hard not to see the parallels between how we, not only the lessons on the mats, um, but even just how to engage with people. And maybe, you know, especially if you're that A type, used to always like pushing forward, you very quickly on the mats see that that just doesn't work at certainly not in every situation. And 
learning to, I mean, jujitsu is the gentle art. It's about adapting. It's about um, working with someone, you know, as a training partner to, to grow together. And the, just that idea that I don't have to be against the other person. I can be working with them, even though we're very much combative, right? Absolutely. It's like this three-dimensional puzzle solving, right? It, it's it's it, and it tasks the brain in a very uh, similar way to what sales is. I mean, sales is often referred to as oral jujitsu, and you know, for me, it's about sales as a service. I mean, I told, I resonated everything you just said there. Sales is a service. I mean, sales tends to, tends to get a bit of a a mud thrown, you know, the idea of the salesperson selling people stuff that they don't need. You never want to be that person. And, you know, but, but sales is a noble profession as a profession. Like we, we, we make the world go around. People that are effective in sales bring real solutions. We get paid to solve problems in this world. And when we can bring those problems to organizations, they can hire more people, they can save more money, they can increase their salaries. Like there's so much good in this world that can happen through sales and i just love that we've put this together to give folks a framework to be able to do that uh, on an ongoing and effective way like you can sell ethically and still be effective absolutely it's funny we've never met before but you use sales as a service as a one of your i guess you know parts of your book and what part of your business ethos and i wrote an article a few months ago as a contributor for forbes called service as a service and it was the same exact thing that you just described is just what i went to the heart of so uh if you're listening to this and you want to check it out just google service as a service jordan edwards and you'll find it but exactly what daniel just described um it's very explicit in jujitsu you know it's very easy to see on the mat who's who's well maybe for some people who's winning and who's losing and what's happening but when you're trying to coach a, a new student in business um you you need to get through to them and and john donahar says the best way to do it is with metaphor um is that what you do in your book yeah <clears throat> in a in a way that you wouldn't necessarily expect so listening to a few of your episodes got to see you know way you're approaching writing your book, talking about lessons directly from the mats, like leverage and balance. Um, we take a bit of a different approach. So we use a sales or we use a jiu-jitsu competition as an analogy <clears throat> for a sales engagement. Mm -hmm. And so I created a, what I call the jiu-jitsu success formula. And it's a four phase process for prepping for, entering, winning and learning from a jiu-jitsu competition and mm. each of those four phases has you know different uh components each of which has their own subcomponents. and so the idea is pre-fight what do you do before the engagement fight how do you show up how do you open how do you position yourself within the engagement winning how do you set up and position yourself to actually close the deal and then post fight what do you do, win or lose, after every engagement? And then whatever you learn from that engagement then becomes your ammo, your your knowledge, your uh, learning for the next engagement. And so it's this recursive system that applies, you know, some would say kind of anywhere. We know jiu-jitsu applies everywhere, but so elegantly in sales. And, you know, there's uh, when people who aren't in jiu-jitsu and, and have this kind of stereotype of martial arts all being like, you know, bullheaded, they think, wait, sales shouldn't, only old school sales is that, you know, bullheaded, we're going to go crush this, we're against the prospect, where right. modern sales is more, as, as you guys have been talking about, sales as a service and really trying to work with and for the prospect. We're not fighting the prospect. We're fighting the forces that get in the way of us actually being able to help them. If you actually have something that can help them, then anything that gets in the way of that is the enemy, not the prospect themselves, if that makes sense. Great okay. Zig Ziglar, you know, if uh, you have a moral obligation to fight to get your solution in someone's hands if, if you feel that you can truly help them. And that fight does not have to be a negative thing. It can be of service. Yeah. Yep. I completely agree. So I would love to explore a little bit of that, but can you maybe tell me a little bit about yourselves? Elliot, can you start and what's your background with sales and business? Um, 
have you been in the business world or are you running a school, a jiu-jitsu academy? What's your- A little uh, bit of both. So uh, I left school to start my first company a long, long time ago. Uh, it was a marketing firm right at the end of the dot-com boom, right at the beginning of the bus. So it didn't quite pan out, got into the corporate world. I was actually in corporate sales for a number of years. <clears throat> and then uh, I've got an impact project that I've been working on kind of on the side for a long time. So I left the corporate world to start my own school. My first school was actually a women, Canada, I think maybe Canada's only, but certainly Canada's first women only jujitsu academy. And ran that for like five years. We did a lot of like goodwill work, free women's self-defense workshops, ran over a thousand, uh, more than a hundred, sorry. Yes, more than 50 workshops for more than a thousand women. Um, and then my current school, Open Mat, grew out of that. And so I've been running a school for the better part of 15 years and then always had side businesses going on. And then Mastermind BJJ, this program for entrepreneurs was intended to kind of open those doors back up and get back into a bit more off the map business just to help my impact project. It's fantastic. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, how did you come together with Sean Williams while he was in Los Angeles and you're in Toronto? Mm -hmm. uh, I was a purple belt. I mean, I, I've been training 25 years, <clears throat> but there were very few black belt. I mean, there were no schools in Canada when I started or almost none. So I was a purple belt probably 2005 ish and uh, was down in LA for a wedding. Went to train with a number of like the legends or current legends, some of the Machados, a few of the Gracies. Uh, I met Sean then and uh, trained with Eddie Bravo then as well. And I was just so blown away by the precision and beauty and elegance of his technique. It felt like the first time I learned jiu-jitsu back at the Gracie Academy in like 96, um, it just seemed like magic. And that's what his technique seemed like. And so <clears throat> would keep going down a few times a year, bring him up for seminars, eventually affiliated mm -hmm. and uh, got my black belt in 2012. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. That's an incre incredible story. I don't know Sean personally. He wouldn't know who I am, but I've trained at his acad academy in Los Angeles many times. Oh, yeah. He came up with my sensei, Sensei Nardu. And Sensei Nardu Debra is an incredible martial artist and black belt under John Donahar and, and Henzo. Mm -hmm. And early when I started training jujitsu in 2009 and my early years in, in the white belt years, I traveled a lot for work for my real estate business because I have properties all over the country. Right. And wherever I would go, I'd bring my gi and my rash guard. And I'd say, Sensei, do you know anyone in Texas? Do you know anyone in Puerto Rico? Do you know anyone? And I would go to Los Angeles quite often. And he said, you have to go to Sean Williams, Jim. And uh, Sean is an amazing instructor. He's an incredible commentator. If you ever catch an event where Sean is doing the commentary, because he often does, he's, it's like he just really knows his stuff. And, uh, and he has an amazing reputation as, as, as running great academies. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been very fortunate to... Um, train under him, which was, which is really nice. I always say, I'm sensei Nardu students. Ah, how's Nardu doing? You know, it's, just, mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah. To you. No, very, yeah. Daniel, what's your background? I've been in sales, B2B sales for 25 years. Um, solid, uh, sold everything from uh, corporate video to uh, sponsorships for conferences to telecom um, vending machines for a little while. Um, and I uh, remote risk recently. I'm the I'm the director of sales of a company called Advanced Your Reach. We use people. We we help people use speaking as a way to grow their business. Mm -hmm. And um, I've helped grow that company from from a three million dollar company over to uh, over a twenty million dollar company in the last three years. Wow! Congratulations. So I've uh, I've teams that uh, you know my, I've ran ran different teams of uh, of, of being a sales director multiple businesses, probably bringing in over $100 million of the last last uh, a few years that I've been uh, doing that. And I just, I love sales. Uh, I got I got duped when I was a young kid uh, in university. I was trying to get to a gym and uh, think, okay, I'm a little chunky. I want to lose some weight. And I, 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 I got completely thrown in. I, I met this guy at the top of the stairs. It was like a fridge. 
She's like, oh, look at you. You're a chunky boy. We're going to, we got to get you, we got to get you going in here in the gym. Yeah. And he started selling me the towel service and the locker service and this, like by the end, I couldn't afford it. And it cost me, I remember it cost me $213 to get out of the deal. Like the way they wrote it, you had to like, anyways. And at that point I fell, I said like, how did he do this to me? And I, I just threw myself into, into learning everything I could about sales. And that landed me my first sales job. And I I'd never looked back. Yeah. I think when most people think of sales, they think of Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, sell me this pen, yeah. or Glen Gary, Glen Ross, you know, always be closing, coffees for closers. Um, maybe you could tell the audience, you know, why, how and why has that been turned on its head? And how, you know, how, in some ways, how does your book explore that? You know, I think it's been turned on the head because everyone's been exposed to it. Like before the movie Wolf of Wall Street, I would get that question in interviews. Like I, I, I was, I, I'm the guy that got that question in an interview, and they may have read it in a book, you know, years ago or something. But before, as soon as the movies hit, as soon as the the popularization of all of all of that happened, everyone became immune to it. And so you can't old school sales techniques just evaporated. Well, I think it was like a five year period. Where, where movies and popularization came out and, and everyone just is, a, is, is, is onto it. Like it just doesn't work. And as you get into the professional realm of, of especially in business to business, it's about actually solving problems. It's not, it's not, you can't fast talk. I mean, you, you know, even today you go on a car sales lot, it is not fast talking, you know, this car has your name on it. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's not <laughs> happening, right? It's yeah. very much consultative sales. It's very much about uh, solutioning. And, and unless you have a real solution that can solve a real problem, you're not going to, you know, if you're just, you're just trying to fast talk your way through things, it, it's not, it's not going to work. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think everyone's been immunized against it and, and, and it only, only connecting human to human is ever going to work like that. That is the only way to sell is to understand the human that you're speaking to and being able to empathize with that person and, 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 um, and uh, approach them from both an emotional and a tactical manner so that both sides of the brain is satiated. Our book explores it because it, it, it's, a, it's a system. It's not just like a, a series of, of strategies. It is a system and it has, we've embedded resources. Like when you get the book, you can go to the site and you can download all the, all the templates and everything. It's, it's a complete system. And it, as, it, as you go through the system, it forces you to have that lens in mind. Like before, one of the one of the key tenements is, you know, before getting on a call with somebody, spending five minutes to do some research on five on, on things, something that you can geek out with the other person on for five minutes. Hmm. Um, and, you know, it's like going on to YouTube, going on to Google, uh, going on to uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, their company website, and just seeing one thing. I don't care what it is, but it, from as a human to human, you're bit uh, on what, what on everyone's social media. Um, I, you can find one thing. I don't care if it's about a love of socks, <laughs> religion, which I maybe stay away from. But you know, uh, you went to the same school. You went to you you, you know somebody in like I don't care what it is, but there's something you can geek out with. And I remember this so clearly. I went to go pitch. Uh, a, um, a, a, it, was a, it was a software company that had a user conference, and I wanted to to uh, to help them with sales for sponsorships. And I went in and I did my research, and I found out that one one of the user conferences, the guy wrote an elephant on stage. He wrote an elephant on stage. So what did I do? I got ready. I came into the I came into the into the um, into the meeting. And I said, John, John, I am so I I waited this whole week. I cannot wait to have this conversation with you. He's like, what do you mean? I got to ask you. I, I just have to. He's like, what do you, what? What was it like to ride an elephant on stage? Like, was it, what was the, what was the permits? Was it a poop machine? Like what, like how did, how did that all happen? Tell me. He's like, oh, you saw that instant connection, you know, five minutes of geeking out and you get the, you get the job. I mean, you get the job because you did your research and you did your time. Now I know there's a lot of salespeople out there that says, uh, rapport is dead. It's like, you know what? It's humans. You're, 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 you're speaking to another human being get to know who they are before you go have a conversation. And I'll tell you, it drops the walls quicker than anything. Yeah. Well, One Daniel, you're, you're starting your jujitsu career, but I was going to ask Elliot, have you used uh, jujitsu as a, a geek out in your uh, 25 years uh, training? <laughs> uh, oh, to connect with people? <laughs> oh, man. What, what breaks the, the ice better 
than than sharing sweat with people or just knowing that someone else does jiu-jitsu, right? I mean, it's because it's, you know, especially in business, um, there are things that will connect people. Oh, I worked at this company or, but none of that is as personal to someone as their own jujitsu journey, like their own ups and downs, their, like how all their, all the injuries, all the wonderful people they've met, all the internal questioning of themselves. Can I do this? Am I ever going to get there? Um, to that belt or to win this tournament, whatever. And and everyone's got their, like, you know, I, I say that whenever you travel across the world, as, as you pointed out, it's like you've got an instant family. So, like, somewhat people are going to welcome you in, show you around the city. Like, wh- what other activity really allows that, right? So, yeah. for me, it's it's kind of the ultimate connector, which, is, which was the original idea behind Mastermind BJJ and why I think, you know, business jujitsu as a concept is so on point, you know, and it's not just from a, Hey, those who already do jujitsu, this is a great way to connect in business. It's also like how good, I mean, you know, yourself for those who do, who are in business, how much good would it do for everyone to get into jujitsu for themselves, Mm -hmm. for their confidence, for letting that confidence we know translates off the mats as well. So for me, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that I've gotten to take the path I have. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu is, uh, is quite misunderstood by people who, who don't train in it. Uh, oh. my, even my family members who know that I've been training jiu-jitsu will often say, are you still doing that karate thing? Or yeah. you know, <laughs> are you still training martial arts? And after doing now, you know, this is my, I'm in my 11th year, I'll be approaching 12 in August. And it's not something that I do. It's who I am. You are. Yeah, of course. Even if I haven't trained, because when we were shut down in COVID for those three months, I barely was able to train. All the gyms were closed. We were stuck in my house. I bought some mats. I was trying to teach my brother and my brother-in-law, but jujitsu is not something that only that you do. It's also uh, philosophy and a way of thinking and an mm-hmm. approach to life. If you let it, you know, it could be just a sport, but you, the, you know, the three of us, what we share is that we've taken the application and we've brought it into other parts of our lives. And, uh, what I often say on this podcast is that when I'm conducting business or conversation or anything else, I am doing jujitsu. I feel like I'm doing jujitsu mm-hmm. and, uh, the, the, the push and the pull, the awkward positions that you find yourself in uh, as a business owner and somebody who runs multiple businesses, I have had every single metaphorical arm, bone crush, knee on belly, shoulder mm-hmm. pressure. Uh, it's been, I can't imagine a better way to, um, to learn how to deal with this kind of stress and pressure than having jujitsu in my life. And, well, I, and I often tell people that. If you think about it, like, <clears throat> you know, those business losses were very painful, but especially if you're doing big real estate deals all over the country, they're probably also not happening every single day. It's probably like a, an eight month deal and then it comes together or it doesn't. So you do learn from that experience about how do I deal with loss? How do I reflect on that? But on the math, you're winning and losing like 30 times a night. So you get very familiar and very intimate with the process of winning and losing and how it actually affects you. And you learn not to, I mean, you know, especially if you're a successful person, losing is painful and no, no less on the mats, but you learn to see it a little differently. Right. That's right. Perfectly said. Um, one of the things that I, I, I'm excited to read your book and that I try to communicate to a lot of young entrepreneurs, my book and the podcast is really for, all of the young guys in the gym that come to me week in and week out and they want to start a business, they have some kind of job and they, they just ask me these questions and the questions roll on months after months after months and getting started is like the number one, the hardest part for most people to, to begin their career. But my dad's voice echoes in my head and he always says, sales drive the business. You got to do operations perfectly, but sales drive the business. That's it. Sell and everything else has to fall in line. If you don't sell, 
you're out of business. I wrote, my dad and I wrote a book together called This Is It. It came out about two, two and a half years ago. And it, the, the, the full name of the book is If You're Waiting for a Sign to Start Your Business, This Is It. And the first chapter is Just Start. And I tell the story of uh, when I started my first business in college. I'd had a million jobs, but I never started a business. And I was going to start a t-shirt business. And the process of getting the business started was just dragging on for months. I got to make a business plan. I got to open bank accounts. What about insurance? What about this, this, this? And my dad looks at me after about six months and he goes, listen, business is really simple. Make the t-shirt, sell the t-shirt. That's it. And, uh, you know, that's a, a famous story in my family. And we wrote about it and I often tell it to my teams and to my sellers, but Selling is, that's it. It's, it, it is, it's commerce. It is, uh, it is no different today than it was for Phoenician sailors, uh, you know, a thousand years ago or the Dutch East India, you know, company. It's, it's as old as time, but it is the most important and fundamental part of business. There, Nothing happens. Nothing happens in business without the sale happening. There's a running joke in among school owners. What's the most common excuse or reason people give for not starting to train? Well, I got to get in shape first. It's like, well, how do you think you get in shape, right? It's like, just start, just get it going. And then if you think of uh, some of my uh, work outside of business and writing a book about uh, bigger picture stuff and we talk about the idea of a business or an organization is kind of like an organism. Well, sales is how it eats. And if it doesn't eat, it dies. That's and that's right. true. Like you could have the most, uh, you know, money focused business. You could have the most altruistic business. It doesn't matter if it yep. doesn't eat, it dies. And sales is how we get food into the body. Yeah. Daniel, wax on this a little. I mean, tell yeah. us from the perspective of someone who's starting their jujitsu journey, you know, what does it feel like to now come into this world and you just you're just starting i mean you had to take that leap and you show up night after night and you're not probably where you think you could be or where you want to be or where you know you're going to get to uh i draw that as a business metaphor all the time for people who who, who are in the jujitsu gym and they show up night in and night out and they want to start a business. And I say, you're not going to start a business. And then tomorrow you're just going to be in business again. It's going to be successful. I said, you're going to be a white belt for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's the same as sales. I mean, so going through this journey of, 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 of really learning from, from square one of jujitsu has been absolutely eye opening. And it's, it's why the book came about was there's so much that Elliot would be teaching and I would just go and take that and run with it in my in with my sales team. <laughs> you know, one one of the things was uh, just this the idea of 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 learning from your wins. I got to tell you, I always focused on reviewing the losses of my team, thinking that I'll do those call reviews. It'll help them, and yeah, it always helped them. But when I started to have not only them review their wins, but mm -hmm. then me review their wins, so that I can sh I can show them what their brilliance was and where they could improve even in their wins man i saw a five point increase in their conversion rates and you and you can understand the conversion rates that's what the book is really all about is not it's not about getting more leads like that's not what the book's the books about how do you how do you convert more with what you have mm -hmm. and it was incredible it was absolutely incredible and that was just like one little thing you know elliot taught and that just started stacking it started stacking it was it was just incredible the Another one was um, just talking about incremental wins within the match. So this, this the concept of okay, you got to you got to really secure your your positioning before you move on to to do to, to execute on a move. And I started thinking, oh yes, and translating that into a sales uh, a, a sales uh, methodology and really having uh, tools and really having the the sales team think about those those little elements that they should do that they could. They could easily go and 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 pitch too early and lose the sale. But if they do, if they're disciplined and do a couple of things before they do the pitch, that it would it almost guarantee if they got to that point that they would make sure that they would they would always close the sale, and it just always finish the you know finish the the match. And and so it's there's so many parallels. It just makes me giddy. And 
I'm, again, you'll be right. I'm at the, at the beginning of my journey and I cannot wait uh, to get further in the journey so I can maybe even, we can write the next book, the next book out of this because I, I know there's, there'll probably be other things that I, I haven't even been exposed to yet, you know? Yeah. Well, the starting is so important. It's just beginning the journey is, is one of the most critical phases. And you sometimes have to begin that journey over and over and over again, whether it's coming back from an injury or you've closed the deal and now you got to go find the next deal. I mean, there's so many important lessons in starting and restarting and starting and getting back up off, you know, getting back on that mat or getting back in a new deal. So many, so many people are scared of sales mm -hmm. and then, or they start the sales process and they get a lot of no's and they get discouraged from it. And so two things, one, you need a system. You gotta have a system in place for your sales so that you, you can have the mindset come in. It's one of the things the book deals with at the beginning is how to have the right mindset to bring to it. Just like you need a right, right mindset when you come into the mats. Uh, you need to have the right mindset. You need, to, you need to think about your biology. You need to think about a lot of things before you come into that. And, and dealing with that. And, and, and two, you, it, it, you, it, because you have a system, it's almost like you can give the faith over to the system. Like the system will work. I just need to continue to use the system. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's great for folks that are just starting because um, it gives you that. It gives you that confidence to keep going. Yeah. Elliot, can you talk about mindset? You know, long time, <clears throat> just a black belt, trained under some of the best, uh, I was going through your Instagram before, and you've got a who's who of uh, legendary Brazilian jiu-jitsu athletes, coaches, and fighters. What kind of mindset do you need to deal with that failure when you get those no's, no's, no's? Uh, you know, the that's where I feel jiu-jitsu is so helpful because it gets you acclimated to that. It gets you used to that not everything is going to go your way, but you can turn that into a lesson. You can turn that loss into a lesson. And so the first pre-fight, that first phase is broken down into uh, three subsections. Inner game, which is all about the mindset. Intelligence, which is about the understanding the field. So in there, we talk about the history of jiu-jitsu from a competitive standpoint, what historically works, what doesn't, the future, what's upcoming, fancy new things like barambolos and whatnot, and then strategy. You're going to develop a game plan. You got to then train it, but things won't work the way you intend, and then you have to uh, troubleshoot what doesn't work. But when we talk about uh, mindset initially or that inner game, it's all it all starts with your why. So you have to know why you're training. If you're training to go and like show off, well, then the first time you get a loss, the first time you look bad, you're going to you you might stop training. It's like we've all seen those people who showed so much potential at the beginning and then maybe one thing didn't go their way. They had a bad day on the mats. They went into a tournament, didn't go their way and they gave up. It's like their why wasn't really solid. Yeah. Then we need to set actual goals. And the goal kind of focuses that why that dream into something tangible. And then we have to be on top of our mindset and emotions. And this is, uh, that's the third subsection. And where that's so important is, and we, we give a lot of cool tools. Um, you, you've seen, we've all seen, you're on the mats. And if you're feeling bad about yourself, your game, your performance is not the same. Whereas if you can find ways, and that's, that's true in the boardroom, that's true in every area of life. So we need to systematically have ways to get ourselves back. And one thing that made a big difference in my competition results was maybe 15 years ago, I switched from, you know, I'd go into a tournament and I'd know this guy, man, this guy's got great throws or his guard is amazing. And my results were pretty good. But when I switched from focusing on him and what I didn't want him to do to thinking about myself, I saw a big shift and I created this technique that we actually translate into a sales context called the highlight reel. So when I would see before a match, my best moves over and over me, just kicking so much ass, all of a sudden my results just skyrocketed because mm -hmm. I was having fun. I was actually enjoying it and I was, I was in my best state. And so those tools to get into your best state, you know, the highest performer in the world has a range from their best selves to their least. 
they need to find ways systematically. And I think that is, is really key that it's not just, oh, I'm good or I'm not, I'm going to show up on the day. No, no, you have to have a, a program for yourself that you're putting in place. You wouldn't just show up to a tournament and wing it. You go in with a game plan, you go in with a mental game. You have to make sure that you're effectively bringing your best self. Yeah. I love, I love what you just said. I mean, the both of you, it's the mindset is something that again is hard for people who are suffering with the own movie in their head, whatever movies playing, whatever thoughts are going through it, good or bad. It's really hard to break those habits. And I'm as honest as I can possibly be. This is one of the big topics of my first book. You know, I wasn't always like this. I wasn't a, a, a huge success. I wasn't the best athlete. The thing, the thing that was able to change my mindset was reading and listening to books. Mm -hmm. Those two things. When I graduated from college and I had a long-term girlfriend, and we broke up after five years and I was, I used to commute to work from New York City to Long Island every day. And I would drive from New York City to Long Island. And the entire way, I was fantasizing about all the things she must be doing, how happy she was, what mm. she's doing. It was all <laughs> in my head. It wasn't even real. And uh, my dad suggested I read a book, Money, by Tony Robbins, which was this great book that was a recap on the uh, 2008 financial crisis. And... There's a, there's a picture of me reading this book in November of 2014. And all it took was him saying one thing, and it said, where focus goes, energy flows. What you focus on is that. And so my contribution to your to this question about mindset is, what is going in between your ears? You know, are you reading books? Are you watching murder shows? <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you watching CSI Miami for the 15th time on a rerun? Or are you taking a master class? And so to all the young guys out there, you know, go read sales jujitsu instead of binging Netflix. You know, if you want to be successful in business, go find out what two incredibly successful business people are doing and telling you and how to develop that mindset is by showing up to jujitsu instead of going to eat McDonald's, you know. Go spend the time at jujitsu, find like-minded people, read books, listen to podcasts like this or others, and do it every single day, and then watch what happens after a year. It's just amazing. You know, I, 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 started, I started this podcast a year ago in January 2020. I didn't have Instagram. I'd never been on it. I'd never recorded a podcast. I didn't know how to do it. And I had no qualifications for anybody to want to speak to me about business or jujitsu other than I was a successful business person, but that was in my own world. Nobody knew it. And then a year later, it caught fire because of one thing and one thing only. I worked on it every single day. That was it. That, that was the only, there's there no other secret. I just did it every day. I just worked on it every single day and I went from nothing and then I, and then I got to it. Same thing on the mats, right? What do we say a black belt is? A white belt you never give up. It's like you just it's not like you're never going to have that one class that jumps you a belt level. It's those small, consistent basically feeding yourself. Like what I like what you were saying about reading. What what is that? You're taking information in from a reliable quality source. Well, that's what we do on the mats. We go get an instructor, even if you don't have a black belt in your area. Perhaps there's a blue belt who knows more than you and can get you there. And that's the idea, like quality information from people who are experienced, people who've done the work allows you to <clears throat> effectively shortcut the, the process instead of beating your head against the wall, trying to figure it out yourself. And that, you know, even as a running in running a school, um, you know, you, you need to find more successful school owners if you want to have a successful school. So you learn what actually works, what doesn't instead of just experimenting and failing, right? If you're just starting out in business, to, to master the sales conversation will, will position you powerfully for many years to come. And you don't have to do it alone. Like that, that's one of the reasons we, we wrote the book because I saw so many people's businesses failing because they could not master that conversation. So, you know, if, if, if this is some, not a strength for you, come read the book have it become a strength for you so that you can build an incredible business on the foundation of a great sales system. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Let me uh, share my screen here for a minute because I have your book pulled up. Right on. Here is the uh, here is what the, what the book looks like. Sales Jiu Jitsu: The Secret Black Belt System for Champion Leaders. Uh, Elliot Daniel are on the podcast today. Hit number and one. It looks like it's ninety nine cents on Kindle. It is for uh, uh, till till Sunday, but I don't know when you're going to release it. But it's it's just for the book launch. It's it'll be okay. Going back so regular. by the time that this is live, unfortunately, you're going to miss the ninety nine cent. But I will repost this on Instagram so that people yeah. can check it out. Our first, our and uh, you got to number one bestseller in yeah. business project management. Congratulations on that. No Thank easy you. task. I'm sure you sold, you know, a few hundred books to to get it climbing the ranks. That's great. We did. Yeah. Actually, and, both uh, Canada and United States. We hit it in both. We hit it in both countries. It's phenomenal. Well, it's really great to meet you guys. I hope we can continue this conversation. I'd love to bring you back on the podcast in a couple months so we could see how the book launch went. And if I could ever be of service to you, please let me know. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the time. And uh, just to let you know, we'll, we'll, uh, if you'd like, we'd love to have you join it. We have actually, so for those that get the book and like the system, but want more training, we actually have an online course, a very extensive video course taking you through uh, the whole system. So, uh, oh, wait, what's the uh, name of it? Well, so if you go to sale, well, you, uh, so uh, if you're cool, I'll, I'll, we'll set up a separate, uh, URL just for your listeners. If that's cool. Yeah. I so just want to pull it up on the screen. Yeah, sales jujitsu book.com is where all the, re where you can get all the resources and that'll link into, um, a, a little free mini course that we have for everybody and all the resources from the book. And then, and then we have a we have a, a very extensive digital course. I think Elliot was saying we'd love to give to you, Jared Jordan, to, to check out and maybe even use with your teams. And um, uh, but that link is um, salesjitsubook.com forward slash how dash to dash sell. But this one, go in here, and you guys can can pick up all the free resources for all your listeners. Great. Well, I will include all of these links in the description. Awesome. And uh, just wanted to thank you both again for your time and for mm -hmm. uh, reaching out to me about the book. And I, I can't wait to read it. And after I read it, uh, we should catch up again and, and discuss it in a little bit more detail. Awesome. Love it. Beautiful. Thanks, Jordan. All right, guys. Well, have a great day. You too. Have a great day.